Hello biology students and welcome to this tutorial on how to construct a bar graph. A bar graph is good for uh, looking at the frequencies of categorical variable incidents. So in all of the tests and graphs that you've been looking at so far, the sequence of events is first you do the graph, so you have a visual uh, approximation of what to expect, and then you do the statistical test and you compare the two of them. The same logic holds true for the chi-square test and its associated bar graph. Ideally you would do the bar graph first and then do the chi-square test, but in this case in order to do the bar graph it requires you to have already built part of your chi-square table. So to make it easier for you it's easier to just do the chi-square test first and then based on the work you've already done you can build an easy bar graph. So that's what we're going to do here. To the left you can see here's our chi-square table that we built based on the Pierre's Repé data looking at male and female frequencies of uh, one spot on the forewing and two spots on the forewing and we're going to build a bar graph that visually represents these data. So make sure our cursor is clicked on some blank cell there and we're going to insert what Excel calls a column graph, which is just a bar graph. What they call a bar graph is this horizontal thing that please never use. So we're going to use this, just a standard 2D graph, and now we're going to select the data. The chariot data range is going to be right here. This column sex with female male is going to be one of our axes, probably our x-axis, and then these two columns here, the frequencies of one spot and two spots for the two sexes, these are going to be our data. Okay, so as you can see Excel automatically puts the number of spots as the uh, x-axis and the two data series it makes as the two different sexes. That's fine. Uh, I would prefer it the opposite way, so that sex is on the x-axis, because it just seems to make a bit more sense for me. It's, uh, you can't really change sex of a butterfly. It's pretty immovable. So you can just click here to switch the rows and columns, and it's that easy. Now, sex is on the x-axis, and the two data series are the number of spots. So we're happy with that, so we hit OK. Uh, the standard things about how to clean up the graph apply. I'm going to create a separate tutorial on how to clean up graphs. Uh, so getting rid of the grid lines, adding axes labels, things like that. In this case, we're going to keep a legend because we actually need a legend because we have more than one data series. And so you can either distinguish which data series is what with a legend right on the graph like this, or you can delete this legend and explain the difference between the two data series in your figure caption. Just say in words, you know, the, the red bar represents two spots and the blue bar represents one spot. However, we're going to get rid of color because, as you know, color is unnecessary and uh, this would all print out as gray if we were printed on a black ink paper printer and uh, we wouldn't be able to tell what's what. So we're going to right click on the blue data series and format the data series. And we're going to change it from an automatic color system to we're going to tell it, uh, let's make this one black. And let's make sure the border color is black as well. And the line around the border it doesn't really matter because it's black on black, so it won't show up anyways, but let's let's make sure it does show up. Let's have it 1.5 point. And that'll come in more handy for this data series, which will make a white bear. There we go, it's white, border color, black border, and nice and thick so we can see it. There we go. And this will be even more clear once we uh, 
delete the grid lines and make everything all pretty. There's no error bars on this type of graph because it's just counts. So there, you're not presenting an average with variation around the average. This is just the number of females and males with one or two spots. And that's why for this type of graph we use a bar graph instead of a box plot or a pseudo box plot. Remember when we were plotting, uh, I think it was wingspan for these butterflies, we used a box plot and so the mean would be hovering somewhere up here in the data range with a couple of error bars hanging off of it to represent the variation. We, do, we did that instead of a bar graph, which a lot of you might have been inclined to do from the outset, because a bar graph insinuates that everything from zero right up to where the top of the bar is, uh, is filled up. And in this case, that's true. We really have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight females with two spots. Whereas in the example of the wingspan graph, uh, that is not the case because you never find Pierre's Rappé butterflies with one, two, three, four or so millimeter long wingspan. They're always up here with the whiskers of air bears around them. So that's how to know the difference between when to plot something as a bar graph, which is when there's a continuous series of data between zero and the top, and when to use a box plot or a pseudo box plot, when this stuff, this area is all vacant, there's no data except up where the, the mean is and the error bars. So there you go, that's how to do a uh, bar graph to represent your chi-square data. Clean it up by watching the uh, tutorial on how to clean up a graph.